Hello friends, Tanya here with another video featuring Spellbinders March 2024 releases. This is going to be a Let's Celebrate release uh, video. This is the Floral Celebration Better Price Plate and Coordinating Layered Floral Celebration. So the stencil and Better Press Plate bundle have been sold out practically since the beginning. <laughs> And I'm hoping they come back into stock very soon. I am going to uh, foil this with some blush car uh, blush foil on some craft cardstock, which is a beautiful combination. And these better press plates, you can press with them and you can foil with them. And I do both of those regularly. I love how well they foil, and I love the crispness of the better pressing. Look at that gorgeous pattern. I have a half sheet of cardstock, so that's five and a half by eight and a half inches. I had a little schmutz there, so I used an eraser to get rid of that before I go on to foiling the second part of this um, piece of cardstock. Now, originally I was going to tape that down and do the hinge method, but I decided to lay the foil down, butting it up to the edge of the previous foiling laying the plate over the top of that and then tacking it down with a little bit of the best ever craft tape. I used to be afraid that this was going to remove the foil from our paper, but I haven't had that do that, especially on fine line designs. There is our whole panel of uh, pattern and it's just so much fun. I decided to go ahead and uh, ink blend with the Distress Oxides, this entire panel. I'm going to start with Ripe Persimmon. And we're going to use different colors for different styles of flowers here. It's very easy to line these up. And since I foiled this twice, I will just move the stencil and do the stenciling twice. Next, I'm using Mowed Lawn for the couple of leaves on that particular panel. I'm going to line this up with the other side just making sure that I get everything lined up appropriately um, and I'm using the Altenew stamp wheel insert to hold my stencils and cardstock in place this is wild honey distress oxide we're going to use that on these flowers when I've done this method of holding the uh, stencils in place and doing a large surface. I often use a piece of acetate to mask off the areas that I don't want to accidentally get ink on, but these stencils are pretty easy to avoid inking over the wrong spots. Next colors I'm using here are Abandoned Coral and Kitsch Flamingo. I just love how ink blending looks on craft cardstock. Um, you can ink blend over a lot of lighter colored cardstocks uh, with the Distracts Oxides because they are a pigment, they're a hybrid ink with a pigment quality to it. So they do, um, they don't sink into the, they don't absorb into the cardstock, they sit more on top. I am moving on to, is this the mode lawn still? Yes, this particular stencil does a lot of the leaves. Just flipping that around, lining that up. These are very easy to line up. And this is a large stencil, actually. It's bigger than an A2 size card front, which I love. You know me, I love a good large size so I can do my five by seven cards. Next, I'm using the Rustic Wilderness for the last layer of leaves. I believe this is the last layer of leaves. And I've sped this up, um, I think two or, I think it's only two, double speed. Yep, um, just the last layer here, just lining that up. Oop, I had to flip it. <laughs> it becomes pretty apparent pretty fast. And you can see that I'm pushing the stencil down onto that Altenew stamp mat. Um, it's like a giant piece of photopolymer and it easily sticks to that. Oh, I thought that was the last stencil. I was wrong. We're going to use some Twisted Citron for this layer of leaves. We must be getting close to the end. Now, it seems like even more because I'm stenciling uh, each piece twice. 
And look at that. There is our finished background. Oh, I just love that. I want to go make another one right now. <laughs> Uh, next, we're going to use the dye, the Peony Celebration. This is still available. It creates the very fine detailed and it has a backer piece that is an outline. So I've die cut these with some watercolor cardstock and with a couple of different greens. I did watercolor these peonies. I'm using the Sakura Koi watercolor palette and I'm using a yellow and a peachy orange color here. Very um, light. I add the darker color uh, towards the base of each of these petals and then I'm coming back with some clean clear water and blending those petals out. I'm not worried about going over the outlines because we're actually going to layer um, the green outlines over the top of this uh, watercolored panel and I have it on press and seal to keep all of the pieces together so they don't fall out while I'm trying to do the watercoloring and when I glue them together. This I'm using a little bit different color. So the larger flower was a more yellow. The, the smaller flower is more orange. Here I'm using the backer. I'm going to glue this whole flower to the backer. And it looks like most of the pieces stayed in, or I, all of the pieces stayed inside um, they didn't fall out on me. The backer is just going to help keep everything together. So I don't have to worry about um, anything falling out when I, I'm working to apply this to the card. Here is the lighter green outline panel and it has all of the leaves and some buds and it's just going to look just delightful. I've seen people use gold metallic, I've seen white, I've seen pearlized, I've seen all kinds of different border colors or outline colors. Remember you don't have to use green for the leaves if you don't want to. You can also cut it from a white cardstock and then color the leaves so that over the flowers it's white and the leaves are green. There's lots of ways to use this. I did do this three times and um, I only use one in this video. I'm using the Sakura Koi watercolor palette again here and I'm going to create a background or a backdrop for those flowers. So I'm using the same watercolor colors that I used to paint the flowers and this will tie the whole design together. Just laying this down with a, a big round brush with water and I do some layering here. This is wet to dry on a wet on dry cardstock. I didn't wet this cardstock or, or this watercolor paper before I started. This is Spellbinders watercolor paper. They do sell it in packs of 10 and packs of 25, eight and a half by 11. And you can cut that down to your uh, needed size. This is four or five by seven card. So this is, I believe, four and a half by six and a half inches. No, I don't remember exactly how big it was. So we're going to use this die. It's an oldie but goodie from the club kits. And I showed you the name there and I wasn't paying attention. So I can't tell you what it was. It was oval something. <clears throat> oval and borders. Anyway, it creates this lacy border or lacy oval. And you have these two half dies that um, allow you to do the die cutting around it. And you could let this overhang. There's lots of ways those um, divided dies are useful. Next, we're going to use the, use the Mother's and Father's Day Sentiments um, Better Press Plates. We're going to foil this with some polished brass. Just going to add this to my hot glimmer foil system. I'm actually going to put that back in the heating system, let it heat back up to green, and then set the timer, then run it through the die cut machine. We're going to foil this on craft cardstock also with the same polished brass uh, foil. I love this combo, polished brass and blush. Both look fantastic on craft cardstock. 
pull that off and you can just see how lovely that looks. We'll use the coordinating die. So the one plate cuts, or sorry, one plate foils or better presses all of the sentiments at once. Then you can come back with the coordinating die that cuts all of the sentiments at once. So you get four sentiments with one pass. Easy peasy. I added some extra cardstock to this um, stenciled background that we created and I'm going to add it to a craft colored cardstock base. This is 100 pound Desert Storm cardstock. Cut to 7 inches by 10 inches and scored at 5 inches to create a 5 by 7 card base. We'll take this oval that I put a little bit of extra cardstock behind and I did use water, yeah I did mention I used watercolor cardstock for that and adhere that to the front of the card and then we'll take this beautiful peony bunch and adhere that and we have a happy mother's day sentiment that we're going to layer and I had used the negative for the polished brass on some spellbinder specialty cardstock and die cut that also so I have lots of these sentiments I may have several Mother's and Father's Day cards coming up soon <laughs> adding that layered piece to the front of the card then I'm going to take this extra piece from cutting down the panel for the front of the card I trim that down I think this is about two inches wide maybe two and a quarter inches wide and I trimmed it down to just under five inches wide um, are long and adhered that to the center of the inside of the card. I really like how this looks and the white pops off of that background. So that's card number one. Card number two, we're going to use the Celebrate Flowers uh, Better Press Registration System. So I have a piece of um, cardstock here that is, this is Hammer Mill 80 pound cardstock that uh, I have cut a half sheet here because I'm going to make another five by seven card and this gives me wiggle room to cut it down. I've got some satin gold uh, foil here. I taped down my plate, ran that through the uh, die cut machine after I uh, let that heat up appropriately. And now we're going to take this uh, satin pastel. This is like a peachy color. I'm going to lay that over our uh, celebrate and I can kind of see it through the foil and then I lay my um, flower sentiment from this there if you're doing the press method versus the foil method there is an acetate sheet that you tape down and that is your guide for those two panels or those two plates next we're going to take the copper plate um, happy birthday and we're going to foil this in the same uh, foil, and I believe this is gold foil, on some hammer mill cardstock. And look at that. That is just so pretty. I love those copper plate sentiments. We're also going to use the new mirrored arch labels die, and I'm finding one that fits nicely. And we're going to also use the peony background better press plate. Here I've got it... Um, laid on the plate the normal way and I'm looking for the tawny brown better press ink we're going to um, ink it up this is from the nature tones set of better press plate uh, inks and I'm just going to ink this entire panel. I might have to get one of the new blank better press ink pads and fill it with some tawny ink or tawny brown ink because I use this ink a lot. It works really well on craft cardstock. Um, it's a great color. I love this color. Now that I have the whole panel or plate inked up, we'll run that through the platinum. And I do have the full size platinum, so I have a lot more wiggle room for putting things at an angle or turning them sideways if I need to. You can't put the better press or the glimmer in sideways, but you can tilt it a little. And you have room for things to overhang. I cut two of these, uh, or sorry, I cut the happy birthday out with a smaller of the mirrored arch uh, 
labels and then a larger one to frame that sentiment and that's going to go on the inside of our card. So I'm going to create um, this peony background for the front of the card also. So I've turned my plate sideways on the platen and I'm inking um, the area that I know that will be covered by this five by seven piece of cardstock that I have taped to the chase. Got a good nice covering and I you do have to re-ink the better press ink pads more often because you're using a lot of ink when you do this. Um, and I do have a re-inker for the tawny brown. And I think I had just re-inked it before I started making these projects. Once I have that nicely re-inked, I'm going to turn my platen, make sure that I have it lined up appropriately, run that through my platinum, and there's our beautiful background. Next, I'm going to take this floral archway embossing folder. I was really pleasantly surprised to find that this is still in stock. I love it. It's the January 2023 3D embossing folder of the month. And I've taken this strip of cardstock that is roughly one and a half inches wide and embossed that. Now I'm going to take some of this solar paste. I finally got my hands on some of the uh, golden hour. Um, not that it was sold out. I just had finally reached for it and uh, or actually finally ordered it. I'm using this to uh, add a little highlight to this 3D embossed image. And it looks great on the craft cardstock. It's very subtle. You can see it pretty well on camera. Um, and in real life, it shimmers, especially when you turn it in the light. Just beautiful, nice and subtle. And um, I probably went got a little carried away because I had some extra on my, uh, I just used a stamp case here stamp envelope which is a non-porous surface and use that to put little dabs on so I could keep a thin layer on my finger. That cleans up very easily with water. Uh, I just have some soapy water in this big spray bottle that I keep at my desk. Now I'm ready to start assembling. I've added some extra cardstock on the back of this uh, embossed panel. So I'm trying to line this up with the grid lines on my work surface to line this up pretty much in the center of the panel here. This is a four and a half by six and a half inch panel that I'm going to adhere to a five by seven card base. And I'm trimming off the extra. That's why I'm adhering those at this point. I uh, have already applied some extra cardstock scraps on the back of this panel and will adhere that to another craft cardstock base. This is um, a piece of Desert Storm 100 pound cardstock, and uh, I cut it at seven by 10 inches, scored at five, and that creates a five by seven card base. We adhered our center panel and then the uh, sentiment for the inside of the card. Now, often the inside of my cards could be a whole nother card front. So you're almost getting two ideas for the price of one. But I feel like I have to decorate the inside of my card. And my current trend is to add die cuts. I really enjoyed this video. I hope you did too. I feel like I say the same thing at the end of every video. Subscribe, like, leave me a comment. Check that description box below for all of the products that I use today. They will be listed and linked as always. I love to hear from all of you. Uh, please know I read all of the comments. I do not generally have time to reply, but I do enjoy hearing from you. Until next time, here are a couple more videos I thought you might enjoy. Bye-bye.